Mr. Herr, in terms of research, what would you say is the biggest challenge in the development of bionic limbs these days? A strategy, a design strategy that we employ uh, is uh, first deeply understanding human physiology, uh, so doing the necessary scientific work, and then that informs what we design in both uh, hardware and, and software. Uh, so, for example, with a uh, with a bionic leg, um, you know, in the biological limb, what are the muscles doing? What are the tendons doing? How are the muscles being controlled? And then, how how does one uh, build muscle tendon-like actuators? Uh, how to control those actuators to produce those same dynamics in synthetic form? One of the most recent developments, and perhaps the most high-profile developments, was the your development of uh, a leg, a dancing leg, so to speak, for Adriana Hazlett-Davis, who so sadly lost her leg during the Boston Marathon attack last year. Do high-profile projects like this motivate your team? Do they really focus in particular on projects like this? They do. Um, and it's uh, the, our work with Adrian Hazlett-Davis um, was interesting because uh, in the past we, we very much focused on uh, very ordinary movement tasks such as walking and running. Um, and this is uh, a first adventure into kind of artistic expression um, where we deviated from kind of repetitive movement patterns like walking to something expressive and non-repetitive such as dance. So it presented an interesting scientific and technological challenge. And of course, uh, the huma humanity of the pro project was, uh, was pronounced. We, we brought in a, a dancer uh, with biological limbs and we studied uh, how she moved and the forces that she applied on the ground surface when she danced. And we used uh, Newton's laws and inverse dynamics to understand on, from a joint level what her ankles and knees and hips were doing as she danced and we then uh, developed algorithms to reproduce those movements by layering in kind of a, a spinal reflexive uh, uh, capability uh, in, onto the bionic limb and remarkably what emerged was a rich rich set of dance behaviors Mr. Schneider, uh, we're talking about teamwork here, and um, as I can see, you're sitting in front of an American and a German flag. What can you tell us about your partnership? So, uh, on the one side, uh, my research team is a research department officially between Fraunhofer, German and Profit Research, and the U.S. Veteran Affairs Administration. So we have close links to the clinics and the research in prosthetics in, uh, in Minneapolis and in Pittsburgh and close links to research at the military hospital, the Walter Reed Hospital in Washington, um, focusing at wounded warriors, uh, active duty soldiers and veterans in the treatment uh, who are one group beside, of course, uh, limb loss due to diabetes in an aging population. This collaboration um, between US and Germany is fun, it is relevant, um, it is maybe the, the two also largest markets and research groups and fields on this globe and the field. Um, you, her and me, uh, we're discussing topics of interest for the future. These days, we're having his new uh, um, net positive power ankle uh, under <coughs> clinical evaluation in our labs and it's uh, a fascinating, fruitful discussion for us. Mr. Schneider, the Fraunhofer Institute always has a very large stand at OT World. What areas are you focusing on in particular this year? Uh, we are focusing uh, particularly on um, making the engineering of new devices on humans more and more um, physics-based, that more and more kinetics and ki kinematics of an individual human goes into an individualized design of a device to work better and better on the individual. Um, and we show that in some aspects of um, orthotic actuation and prosthetic actuation 
uh, and uh, future plans of additive manufacturing to assist in that. Thank you.